sweet and juicy peaches, $2.49 per pound. Fresh assorted pork chops, $3.49 per pound. Lay's potato chips, 6.5 ounce bag, only $3.79. Crisco vegetable oil, 32 ounce bottle, only $4.29. Select varieties of Friendly's ice cream, 48 ounce, hot price, only $4.65. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Thursday, the 28th of June. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us tonight. First, it was the setting up of a new mental health facility at the co-ed. Then we highlighted the conditions under which corrections officers are made to work under and the threats they face from inmates. Tonight, Gary Moreno takes a closer look inside the island's prison system. If you have disgruntled inmates, you're not going to have a safe environment. The truth of the matter is they allow us to run those facilities. And that disgruntlement, Mr. Sion maintains, has a lot to do with the fact that budget cuts and staff shortages have resulted in programs being delayed or done away with, creating a tense situation behind prison walls. This is just solely my opinion. A lot of people come in, or a lot of individuals will come in, and they would want to put their best foot forward. But when you're coming in and you're ordered to do certain classes, and certain classes are not available on time, it's pushing back your parole date, this makes very disgruntled in me. The unsafe conditions, he contends, are compounded by staff shortages. Mr. Sion telling us the required strength is 243 officers, but currently that figure stands at 170, which means officers are regularly outnumbered by inmates. And that is the facts. Um, in our housing units, um, currently we have two officers that actually man a unit, and you can have up to 48 inmates in one unit. They are allowing us to run the jail, and that's the reality. Anyone that goes in as a corrections officer, is no doubt on my mind, subconsciously, they have to um, come to the realization that life in Liam is at risk and anything can go wrong behind those walls. And the nature of the modern inmate means the atmosphere inside the correctional facilities is constantly tense. People are under the popular belief that once they come in our charge, that they become real model inmates, and that's not the, that's not the fact. You know, it takes um, a lot of molding, it takes a lot of work in order to change the mindset of those individuals. But uh, currently, with what's going on, um, it's a melting pot in there. And government has to act fast if they don't want that explosion to take place inside of that jail, because there's a lot of things going on that has to be addressed. And the risk, Mr. Sion explains, exists even beyond the walls of Westgate or the co-ed facility. We have pending cases where ex-inmates have approached and assaulted inmates, I'm sorry, officers while off duty. And also, it's, uh, it's, it is, it's pretty much part of our job, yes, but it's uh, an incurred risk working in the facilities because, again, we're working with um, a lot of disgruntled young men that are serving life in prison. And yet another issue, attempts are being made to have corrections officers pay into government's GEHI fund, something Mr. Sion describes as an ongoing attempt to reduce officers' benefits. Well, my principles have informed me that it's a no-go. Uh, the current GHI emolument, it's part and parcel of our payment carrying out our duties of, um, as corrections officers. and. Um, it's been an ongoing issue where uh, they've been systematically um, attacking the, the various benefits that we previously enjoyed, and it began in 1975, and we've given up a lot of benefits since then. Elsewhere, Mr. Sion contends there are a number of outstanding issues affecting corrections officers dating back to 2000, when the POA and government went to arbitration. Many of them are safety issues which, if not addressed, he says, could have serious consequences for officers and inmates alike. All this notwithstanding, Mr. Sian assures corrections officers do their best every day to ensure the safety and security of those in their care. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. And we are waiting a response to these claims from the Ministry of National Security. 
A tourist died after an incident in the waters off Hawkins Island this morning. A woman was swimming when she fell into difficulty shortly after 11 a.m. She was lifted out of the water by onlookers and taken by a police boat to Bars Bay Park, where she was met by an ambulance. The woman was later pronounced dead in the hospital. And it's been seven years since legislation was passed for a land title registry, and now it's being put into operation with its own office. Mike Sharp reports. A new register of land ownership will prevent dishonest people from trying to steal land. All of the kinks that you might expect. Lieutenant Colonel David Birch, the Minister of Public Works, said the new registry will halt lawyers and real estate personnel from cheating clients. This week, for me, um, one of the things that really lifted my spirits in terms of, cause, and the only thing that really does that is actual forward movement and progress. And you'll know that we are on the threshold days away now from going live with the Land Title Registration Office. And um, we have recently recruited four Land Title Officers, one from the UK and, th and three from Jamaica, in fact. And um, Monday I'd indicated to the registrar that, you know what, as a minister, I wanted to be able to share with, first of all, to thank them for agreeing to come and help us, because it was at short notice, um, particularly the Jamaicans, um, in the sense that um, we recruited them via Skype. And Jamaica, as, as most people will know, is my second favorite place on the planet. They actually have um, the gold standard for land title registration in the Caribbean. And so, and I knew that in, in recruiting from there that they would pick the best that they have. And so I went to the office on Monday just to express to them, first of all, thanks for coming to help us, and second, to give them an insight into how long this journey has been and how critical their role is in making this a success for the average Bermudian. The current system of deeds-based conveyance has to be brought up to date. You will know, as everybody does, nobody gives up their deeds. And part of that is we've changed the language. I said to you, I said, you cannot say to any Bermudian, and this, has, this transcends all the barriers, the wealthy to the poor, to the black, to the white, to the everybody, Ain't nobody giving up their deeds. I said, you cannot say to them that you must surrender your deeds to the office. I said, because that ain't happening. You will never see them again if you use that type of language. What, you, what, you, what we have to do is to, is to explain to folk that it's going to go on the register. You, you get, you'll be able to keep your deeds. I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. We'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Sears is Bermuda's largest home appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service and everyday low prices. Surface Terms has been serving Bermuda for over 25 years, supplying and installing tile and natural stone. We have a large and stock selection of beautiful porcelain wood planking, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile. You will also find Bermuda's best in stock selection of countertops, including natural granites, exotic quartzites, and sile stone engineered quartz in all the newest colors. Our team will be happy to help you. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road or give us a call at 295-8005. From happy beginnings and life choices that we make along the way. Colonial protects your lifestyle with the best insurance cover at the best possible price. Health insurance with far-reaching benefits. Family protection and long-term financial plans. Business insurance and generous employee benefits. For happy beginnings to happy ever after, visit cgigroup.com. Colonial, where people come first. Welcome back. 
Police today named two victims of recent road crashes. 59-year-old Neville Darrell died after his motorcycle collided with a car on St. John's Road yesterday morning, while 66-year-old William Munez was on a pedal cycle on Middle Road in Devonshire when he collided with a motorcycle on Saturday night. He later died in hospital. They mark the fifth and sixth road fatalities of 2018. And young Bermudian entrepreneurs are about to embark on what could become a breakthrough business opportunity in New York City this weekend. Five vendors were chosen as winners of the Vent Win competition out of 30 competitors hosted by the Bermuda Economic Development Corporation. The trip offers them a chance to showcase their products at an exclusive Brooklyn vendors market this Sunday. At just 19 years old, Keontae Ming is building a beauty empire from scratch. She's mixing, packaging and selling her products right out of her family home in St. David's. This former hospitality worker saw a window of opportunity and went for it. My contract was coming to an end and so me being a uh very passionate about natural products, always being into natural products. I decided to um, start to make more of them and then I started to sell them to other people. Some people were asking for special things so I started to do that and then I realized how many people were actually interested in natural products and I was like okay I'll just make a business out of this. Miss Ming is hoping her chemical free hair and body butters will appeal to many attending the trendy rooftop Brooklyn vendors market at the weekend. Honestly I'm looking forward to the exposure to the networking just meeting new people seeing what people abroad have to offer and then I'm hoping that people abroad will also see what I have to offer and notice a little Bermudian feel that I have and find some sort Sort of attachment to that. I also hope that I can cater to a lot of natural uh, people out there. I do know that people are big on natural hair and natural products, so I do hope that I can find a lot of clientele out there. The trip could provide a huge publicity boost for these entrepreneurs. Nina Francioni sells eco-friendly candles that are made of recycled beer bottles and have scents named after characteristics of the island, such as tank rain, white lily and cedar. I think it's going to be great for um, you know social media aspects. We can start putting some social media posts out there, um, so people know we're sort of international right now and meeting internet people internationally. Um, hoping to make some really good contacts out there, so maybe one day might be able to sell these you know outside of Bermuda and export some products. Designer Channing Dill says making her own resort wear line has been a challenge, and she's had to do her research to find success. It's probably just a matter of really putting yourself out there and being dedicated and not giving up. Um, I think there's always resources for you to get financing and funding. Again, it's a matter of really putting yourself out there, and when you get a no, that's a no, and you move on to the next thing and the next um, opportunity that you think possibly can be your yes. Minister of Tourism and Economic Development Jamal Simmons says the aim of the initiative is to do just that, provide greater exposure for up-and-coming brands. Women make up the majority of the Bermuda vendors selected this year to attend the New York market. We had a, one young man who was a, a participant who had to bail out for good reasons. He's just had a little baby girl, so I think you know that's a good excuse to step out. But I think it's good to see women entrepreneurs stepping up, and with the government's focus on trying to expand, whether it's more black businesses, more female businesses, it's important to the we support this. With five females selected for this venture, does it suggest business in Bermuda will be led by women in future? I feel like women are more driven in a way than men are. Mind you, I do, like I said, I do have some male entrepreneurial, entrepreneur friends um, that help me along the way and that I help along the way as well. So there is kind of a balance, but from what I see from my own personal perspective is more so women that's getting into business than men are. So, you know, I can only hope that the men will start to step up at this point and start to make their own brands and things like that. 25-year-old Kelsey Williams, the owner of Novelty, is looking forward to showcasing at the reserve market. It's geared towards millennial consumers, including top social media trendsetters. And it could be a chance for a Bermuda brand to reach millions on social media. Weather now, and let's see what's in store for us at the weekend. Here's our AccuWeather forecast. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. 
The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and oh, we are getting ready to head into an unsettled trend as we get ready to head into the weekend. I know, not the best of weather uh, to be off work for the weekend. We will have some showers and storms around, and it looks like we're going to stay pretty unsettled at least into early next week. So we can take a look at what we have going on on the radar here. You can see that we have some showers and storms not too far nearby. We did have that front move through a couple of days ago, and with the flow coming in out of the south, it's still allowing for those showers and thunderstorms. We're also going to be watching a disturbance work its way around us uh, into early next week. So we had the showers around earlier today. It's been pretty cloudy outside, also pretty humid as well. Temperatures sitting right around 80 degrees. Humidity, it's still up there between 75 and 80 percent. Winds are coming in out of the south, so near that old front, that's where we're getting uh, the shower activity that's being activated with that sitting down there. The water temperature is 82 degrees. You know, it'd feel nice to head out in the water, but next couple of days you're going to be dodging some showers and possibly even some downpours as well. Waves inside the reef between one and two feet, and we're looking at waves outside of the reef between three and five feet. So let's take a look at our future cast as we get ready to head into the weekend. Here we are this evening. We have that wind flow coming in from the south, and you can just watch our future cast play out here. We're going to have more showers developing, possibly even some thunderstorms as well. So as you step out the door tomorrow morning, you might want the umbrella with you if you plan on being outdoors for a good portion of the day. Tomorrow night, we could see some of that steadier rain setting up, possibly even some thunderstorms. And we're going to keep that threat in the forecast at least into Saturday. Then I mentioned how it stays pretty unsettled as we head into early next week. We're actually going to have this developing upper level low. This is something that we're going to have to watch into next week as it moves pretty much around the island. And that's just going to keep the shower and thunderstorm threat with us again into early next week. So if you have any plans on heading out in the water, know that there is a small craft warning at least through tomorrow afternoon. Your tidal time's right over here. And it is going to be a bit soggy at times for tomorrow. For tonight, a low of 74 degrees, mostly cloudy. It will be breezy with the winds picking up tonight and staying quite breezy into the day on Friday. We'll get to around 80 degrees tomorrow, but keep your eye to the sky. A couple of showers and thunderstorms and some of this rain will be on the steady side. If you're doing any traveling, here's a look at the gateway forecast. New York, New York, and also Boston. The heat is on. They'll be soaring into the 90s this weekend. No tropical development, but we do have some showers and storms out there. And that's the same for us here. Next several days staying pretty unsettled. Saturday looks like the wetter of the two days this weekend, but still showers on Sunday. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. It's hurricane season. Here are some tips from BFNM. Before a storm, make sure you have a family plan. Stock up on food and water and protect your home. Board up and make sure your insurance policies are up to date. After a storm, check everyone's safety, especially seniors. Inspect your property and secure from further damage. Then, note the damages, list, and take photos. Remember, you can always count on BFNM 24-7 during hurricane season and all year round. Blurry-eyed following your eye appointment? Had one too many? Or simply too tired to face the drive home at the end of a long night? There are lots of reasons why you couldn't and shouldn't get behind the wheel. Introducing HomeSafe from Security Associates, the island's only car and driver home delivery service. Please schedule with us and a HomeSafe driver will deliver you and your car right to your door. Whatever your reason for not driving, you can always get HomeSafe. Call 298-2626 for pricing and to find out how you can become a member or visit homesafebermuda.com. Terms and conditions apply. This is Rick Blomquest of Dupere, Wisconsin. His life is pretty comfortable. He lives in a comfy home, wears comfortable shoes. He even has a comfortable job. Rick Blomquest thought he had comfort all figured out. But then he laid on a Serta and realized his life was only just sort of comfortable. The new Serta <laughs> iComfort Hybrid Mattress. Not just sort of comfortable, Serta comfortable. Feel the difference a good night's sleep can make. Exclusively available at Dreams, Bermuda's only mattress gallery. Hi, Gary. Hi, Desane. Thank you for taking the time to show me your car today. Oh, my pleasure. This is the uh, Kia Soul EV, mm -hmm. and that EV stands for electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. If I stop and pick up someone, who's like, this is, this is an electric <laughs> car, then they 
they say, wow, mm -hmm. this car rides so smooth. Electric cars are the ideal vehicle for Bermuda. Ideal. That group opposed to the ending of conscription, calling themselves the Nine Colonels, has further warned of increased costs to the taxpayer. If an all-volunteer regiment is created, retired, retired commanding officer Colonel Alan Rance, speaking for the group, made the fresh warning following the passage of a bill in the House abolishing conscription once and for all. Colonel Rance also worried about the quality of soldiers that the regiment will be able to attract post-conscription. Here's what he told Arthur Itrot. Well, I, I will put it in terms of risk. Yes, the, um, the downsizing and restructuring that's being planned is usually done to cut costs, but in this case it will be done to hold costs so that better offers can be made to induce volunteers. Now, this may work in the short term. However, in the longer term, I think the inducements to make better offers to compete in the job market will have to lead to higher costs if they want to attract top-class talent which is needed to run the regiment. And that's an important point here. If you are uh, advertising, you're recruiting, and you only get, and, and, I don't, and I don't mean this with any disrespect, if the persons who apply and join are persons who are basically, if, if they're unemployed and, and they do not have a lot to offer or a lot of talent, then the regiment will, surf, will suffer. It has great diversity in, in the talents within it, and, and you need that diversity. Now, government is yet to balance its budget, and inevitably there's going to come a crunch time. The history has been that there's been talk of doing one thing and another, but it never gets past talk because there's never sufficient funding. So we think the reason this downsizing and restructuring has a high risk of failing in this instance is not because it will be a bad plan, but because it could turn into a fantasy without adequate funding. Still to come, Earl Basin will have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. You can count on us. Fresh blueberries, one pint package, hot price $3.99. Fresh Purdue chicken buns, just $1.99 per pound. Freshly baked hamburger or hot dog rolls, 8-pack, hot price $3.99. Kellogg's single-serve breakfast cereal, 1.5-ounce cup, only $1.39. Armor Hammer liquid laundry detergent, 50-ounce, hot price $5.70. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. In other sports news, youngster Daniel Phillips advanced to the tennis finals in Aruba. Matthew Oliveira rode to victory in Milwaukee. And Bermuda defeat Montserrat in Caribbean basketball. Earl Bazin has the details and much more in tonight's sports report. Youngster Daniel Phillips has advanced to the finals of the under-14 boys tennis tournament going on in Aruba. Phillips advanced to the final following his semi-final under-14 boys win over Jaden D. Lag Fonte from Curacao. Phillips won a straight set, 6-2, 6 love. Matthew Oliveira, fresh off his Junior National Championship Road Race title, competed in the USA at the Tour of America's Dairylands Cycling Road Race in Milwaukee. Representing Hot Tubes, Oliveira won the Janesville Town Square Grand Prix Men's Junior 15 to 18 division. Oliveira was able to hold off a field of 55 competitors to win in a sprint finish. Following the controversy of having four players denied the opportunity to play in their second game, Bermuda took to the court for Game 3 of the FIBA America 2021 Caribbean pre-qualifiers going on in Suriname. Bermuda was once again forced to play with just six players. Bermuda would pick up a 72-56 win over Montserrat. Chris Crumpler would lead Bermuda to victory with 27 points, Jason Lowe assisted with 22 points, and Tejor Riley added 16 points. Bermuda coach Gavin McKenzie summed up the win this way. But, well, we basically focused on defense. We're a scoring team anyway, so we just have to lock people down. And we didn't do that in the first half, but then we start locking them down in the third quarter when you only scored seven. So we will always be able to get our shot off. So we figured that would turn the game around, and so happened it did.
The decision not to allow four Bermudians to play is still not sitting well with Jason Lowe. He had this to say after the game during a press conference. I just want to thank my teammates. You know, we're doing it for the four. We're doing it for the four that unfortunately the team hasn't heard to play yet. Four Bermudians. Um, they pay at the end rate to come out here and play. Just to, just to watch us play for the side. So we're doing it for them, we're doing it for our country, we're doing it for our families. I personally feel a little beat up right now, but I'm. Um, um, I'm happy that we got the W. Meanwhile, the Bermuda Basketball Association's Summer League season, sponsored by one, continued inside the Bermuda College Gymnasium last evening with a doubleheader. Game one saw the Southampton Thundercats defeat the Hamilton Parish Rockets 79 to 50, while game two was decided by six points as the Paget Flyboys defeated the Devonshire Chargers 73 to 67. Bermuda sailors were among the 149 sailors that took to the waters on day two of the Optimus North American Championships. Two races were sailed on the day, taking the total to five races. After five races, Sebastian Kemp continues to lead the Bermuda fleet and finds himself in third place with 20 net points. Kemp finished 14th in the first race of the day and then he would cross the line fourth in the second race of the day. Christian Eben is in seventh place with 28 net points. 59 net points sees Magnus Reinstead holding down the 25th spot. Laura Hopman is in 64th with 111 net points. Aiden Lopes is in 72nd with 119 points, while Rachel Batchard is in 73rd with 122 points. In the 89th position is Azai Smith with 150 net points, while Ava Adams is 99th with 174 points. Amelia Lewis is in 100th place with 179 points, and Ethan Edmonds is 110th with 192 points. Meanwhile, on the local front, the Wednesday night sailing series continued on the waters of Hamilton House boat with 25 boats going to the start line for race day 9. Crossfire was the first boat to cross the line in a time of 117.14 and with the correct time of 124.43 saw them finish third on the night. Air Force crossed the line second on the night with a time of 128.12 and with the correct time of 122.41 saw them finish second on the night. Smoking was first on the night with a correct time of 121.35. This after crossing the line in a time of 128.15. Passion was fourth clocking a correct time of 124.50 and Yabster rounded out the top five finishes with a correct time of 125.56. Cambridge United have signed former Carlisle United forward Reggie Lamb to a two-year contract. The 27-year-old Bermuda international who has previously played for Ipswich, Bristol Rovers and Mansfield was released by Carlisle United back in May. Thrilled to have committed his future to Cambridge United, Lamb is quoted as saying, I am absolutely delighted to finally put pen to paper at Cambridge United. It has taken a while, but there was never any doubt about my decision to sign for Cambridge." End quote. On Saturday, July 7th, the Bermuda Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation will host their Night of Champions. Mark Simons, the president of the federation, explains what people can expect on the night. Well, um, the show is going to be back at the Fairmont Southampton. So we're looking forward to that. It's a great venue. It's gonna. It's not going to be in the amphitheater this time. It's going to be in the Ponciana room. Um, so it's going to be a little different for those who have been attending the show sort of historically. Um, but we hopefully, hopefully, it's going to be better. It's going to be a better visual because it's not a step down situation. It's going to be a sort of straight, straight visual at the stage. Um, we have two great MCs, Nadanja Bailey and Kristen White are going to be MC emceeing the show. Um, we have two foreign judges coming in to judge the show. Um, so this 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 is a, a, probably our biggest undertaking. Patrick Nesbitt and Jawa D. Jensback jumped to victory during the HG VBB Grand Prix horse jumping competition in the Netherlands. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. And a programming note for our loyal viewers, those of you who missed their Young and the Restless at 6 p.m., rest assured the broadcast will be aired at 8 p.m. this evening on ZBM TV 9. That's all from me this evening. I'm Jasmine Patterson and hope to see you again soon. Have a great night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.